Hello, my name is Grant Kelly with Linked Technologies Incorporated. We are an IT solutions provider in Beaver Creek, Ohio. Um, and today what I'm going to show you is how to create a virtual machine using VMware vSphere 4.0. So the first thing we're going to do is launch our vSphere client and we're going to connect to our vCenter server. So I put in my credentials here and hit enter. And once it goes through its authentication process and finding all of the different plugins that I have associated with this vCenter, it will open up a window here that we can see our ESX hosts and then what virtual machines we already have running. So as you can see, I have three virtual machine hosts. These are physical servers that are running ESX4, commonly referred to as vSphere. So I'm going to right click my LTI VM host 03, that is just the fully qualified name that I've assigned to it. Right click on this and I'm going to say new virtual machine. And a wizard's going to come up that asks me what type of machine I want to do. I'm going to choose typical and we're going to name it and we're going to do a Windows 2008 installation I'm going to choose my grouping to be the default LTI VMs and click next here's where it asks me which storage I'm going to choose as you can see here I've got a couple different options this particular storage is an iSCSI host so I'm going to choose this one click next and we get to choose our operating system so I'm going to choose R2 2008 R2 64-bit click next it's going to ask me what size hard drive I want to assign to it I'm just going to stay with the default click next again and I'm going to put the check mark on edit the virtual machine settings because I want to assign a CD-ROM to it so I'll click continue and then it brings up the actual um, settings of this virtual machine. So as you can see, by default it assigns 4 gigs of RAM, 1 CPU, kind of a standard subset of devices. I'm going to choose the CD DVD and change it to a data store ISO file. So rather than using an actual CD-ROM or DVD, ROM, I'm going to choose an ISO that I've previously uploaded to the iSCSI storage. So this is the ISO I'm going to choose, so I click OK. I make sure that it is connected to power on, and then I click Finish. So as you can see here, my test Win2K8 shows up in my inventory of devices. So I'll go ahead and open the console and I'm just gonna press play and we'll start doing the installation of the operating system in a virtual environment so as you can see it looks pretty standard from this point it's actually starting up the Windows 2008 install very similar to an actual physical machine install at this point what we're actually seeing is essentially the same thing that we would see if we were sitting in front of a monitor connected to a physical server that we were doing an install on. So I'm going to click within the window so that the cursor focus is um, designated to the virtual machine here. Click next and it's going to ask me if I want to install now. Why yes I do. And if you've ever done a Windows 2008 installation, um, you can tell watching this that this is exactly what you go through when you're sitting in front of a physical box. So I'm just going to choose the standard, click next. I do accept the terms and click next. We're going to do a custom installation. Choose the virtual hard drive that we previously created and click next. And then it's going to begin installing. So we'll let this install and then uh, come back to it in a little while when it's done and finish up the VMware tools installation for the operating system. And at that point, we would have a fully functioning uh, Windows installation. So we'll be back.
Okay, and we're back. Our installation has completed up to this point. And we're ready to log in for the first time. So, Windows 2008, when you uh, perform a fresh install, it creates a default user account, the administrator account with no password, and prompts you with the user must pa change the password. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. We're going to give it a password, um, just something that will fit the basic complexity requirements. And we'll go ahead and move on to the next screen. Change the password. Okay. We should be logging in to the actual server at this point. At this point, when you're dealing with a virtual machine, you want to press the Control and Alt on your keyboard to release the cursor so that you can go up, click on VM, and then install slash upgrade VMware tools. We're just going to go ahead and click OK on our warning message here. And then what we'll see within the virtual machine is that we've actually noticed that we got the uh, auto run notification on the cursor. What ESX does is assigns a different ISO image to the virtual machine for a temporary basis so that you can perform the VMware tools install. So we finally got notified there. We're just going to go ahead and run the setup. What VMware tools does is increase the um, acceleration for the video output and does some base driver installs for network cards, RAID cards, um, the virtual mice and keyboards, things like that. So we're just going to choose next, choose typical, click next and install. We'll let this finish the installation. It will require a reboot when it completes, um, but after the reboot is finished, uh, for all intents and purposes, the virtual machine is done. It is now ready to be renamed, joined to a domain, anything that you need to do with it. It would essentially be at the same place that a physical server would be at after you performed the operating system install and then all the driver updates. So we're going to go ahead and click finish. Here's our reboot prompt. We'll say yes, and we can actually watch the machine boot. One of the interesting things here that we didn't really see when it was uh, installing the operating system is you saw there just for a brief, brief moment the flash of uh, the splash screen of the BIOS. So a virtual machine for all intents and purposes is exactly like a physical machine. It has a BIOS through the post cycle on up through the operating system install and uh, normal running. So there we have it. Uh, fairly straightforward. I think in all we took a pause for uh, maybe 10 minutes. So the install was done in probably 15 or 20 minutes. There we go. And please check out our website www.linkedtechnologies.com for further information. Thank you.